Hello, welcome to Adept and Clicks. We finished with series six of the day six um, for the Enclays challenge. And um, I feel like uh, it's necessary for me to um, do a pharmacology practice question so that you guys can see how uh, the information you, re you receive on the day six can be used to answer most pharmacological questions, the way it can be presented. Um, so we'll be using a SATA form of questions and a um, prioritization um, questions in order to emphasize what we've learned. And so let's get to business and see how we can use the, this information to answer questions. Um, the first question we have um, is a SATA question, and you guys know how I do SATA questions. Um, basically, you go for the X, and then after you're asked, okay, you go for your case. And after your case, you go for the buzzwords. After the buzzwords, then you rewrite what you have. And you use the rewrite word to make a choice. And after you make a choice, you move on. You don't compare any answers. So for now, our ask is to read the last portion of the question. Which of the following the nurse expect to see during medication conciliation? Okay, so you, this is an expected finding being asked. A client present with the CHF exacerbation. So reconciliation, and we're looking for expected finding the case patient is in the hospital and it was admitted for CHF exacerbation. And therefore we're looking for something that is expected on the medication list. Those are our buzzwords. So our buzzwords is medication list, CHF and expected finding. So patient with CHF, you have to think about it. You have those buzzwords, you rewrite it and you say, well, and I need to, uh, you have to know certain medications that you have to be on. Um, Ferrosimide, yes, they need diuretic. In CHF, you need to get rid of the fluid. Lensinopril, you need to remodel the heart. And so that's part of the treatment of a CHF. Merinone, this is very uh, powerful medication. You use it for decompensated um, CHF because it's a preload um, decrease. Right? It will decrease your preload and sometimes afterload. So it's very strong. It's a stronger nitrate and therefore this is okay. Losartan, this is ARB. You can use them for CHF. Basically, you're looking for medications that can be used for CHF. So uh, Losartan is an ARB. It can also be used. They, they are used for remodeling, Losartan and lensinopril. The joxin has three forms. It's a chromotrope, it's ionotrope, and a um, bromotrope. So it's one of the common medications that patients have found to be on in CHF. So as you can see, all the answer choices are possible, and therefore all of them can be selected based on our rewrites they are possible medication you can see. Um, so those are all answers that we expect. Okay. Second question, we have a prioritization question. And how do I know immediately? So for prioritization question, check my B sharp. You write your B sharp down and then you use it. You may not see something in the B sharp, but the idea is to be sharp, not expected. So you gotta be thinking, I have to be sharp. I'm looking for something that will kill this patient. So the same thing, you read the last portion of the question, which of the following need immediate follow-up? Immediate. Therefore, I need to look for something, I have to act on it right away. A client was prescribed lansinopril for hypertension. So somebody on Lensinopro, that's my buzzwords. For hypertension, what do I need to do to immediately intervene? I'm looking for something here. 
the same thing, my bad ways, okay? My case, my, my ax, my case, my bad ways, this thing, I rewrite it. Basically, this is a simple rewrite. What should I do to if I see something, I immediately have to intervene and I have to be sharp. So I will avoid eat, eating banana. Therefore, you know, the side effect is hyperkalemia. So it increases your K, it causes angioedema, it causes cough, and it's a teratogen. So that's all I know about it. And I'm using this information to answer my question. I will avoid eating banana. Yes, you should avoid eating banana. So I don't need immediate intervention. I will need to inform my doctor when you're ready to be pregnant. Yeah, this, when you're ready to be pregnant, you need to let your doctor change your medication because it's teratogen. So this, I will try, so I, have, I have tried several cough depressants without successful or uh, without success. That means patient is being coughing. He tries so many cough de depressant, but it doesn't help. That means he has chronic cough. Cough in ACE inhibitor is the early signs of angioedema coming back later. You need to change his, his upper sensitivity to that. It can lead to angioedema, so I need to intervene. I will drink at least two liters of water a day. Why? In the early stage of lensinopril, you can have uh, renal insufficiency. Therefore, um, they should drink a lot of water. So I'm not worried about it. This, I'm being sharp. Why? Because this is an airway problem. And that is a prioritization, airway problem so i have to be sharp therefore this is my right answer this all this i'm not being sharp so that's good question three same thing immediately so that's a priority so you read a last question which of the following need immediate action so prioritization you said i have to be sharp Okay, then you read the rest of the question. A client with end-stage renal disease was prescribed thin alpha due to symptomatic anemia. The patient has anemia. Which of the following I need immediate intervention? So that's my asked. Uh, I don't, in my case, it's been prescribed hippo uh, alpha. And then um, my buzzword is the same thing, symptomatic. I need immediate action. Rewrite. I don't need to rewrite. This one is short, so I don't have to write big words. Just equal and what is what you expected. Then you ask yourself, what is equal? Equal is used to increase what? Your hematocrit for somebody who is anemic. If it does that, it, it make the hematocrit go up. It can go into like 55 and above. This is polycythemia vera. Okay. Polycythemia vera, your hematocrit is high. The problem with this is thrombosis and thrombosis and headache with hypertension as being number one. And the thrombosis will lead to stroke. So the priority action for this is hypertension, which will lead to stroke. So leg edema, yeah, is expected because of increasing uh, hematocrit, and that will cause fluid overloaded, and it will get leg edema. So this is fine, but it's not an immediate action um, that I need to worry about. It's not a B-sharp moment. Headache, yeah, it's related to fluid overloaded. Therefore, I don't need to worry. Hematocrit, this is what is expected because of the increase in hematocrit. Uh, it will go up to like over 55 and above. But hypertension, that can lead to stroke. I got to worry about it. So you lead to stroke, you become what? Neurogenic. And on the B sharp, that is what? The uh, R portion, that's a neurological problem. 
Therefore, I'm worried about this patient. And that's why this is a priority. Even though these are all bad, like edema, headache, and stroke, the most important priority function is headache and uh, hypertension leading to stroke. When they give you this kind of question where all of them is an expected problem for the problem, the condition you're dealing with, look for the one that is serious, that is going to kill the patient. All these things apply to hypoprotein, but I don't want them to be hypertensive. I'm okay if they have a headache. I'm okay if they have leg edema. I'm okay if it's hematocrit 55. But when I see headache, I have to be sharp. It's a B-sharp moment. Same thing. Which of the following require immediate intervention? Something I have to be sharp. This is a prioritization question. A client was prescribed Fraxetine for a new onset of depression. She presented to the clinic two weeks later after the medication for re-evaluation. So this is a bunch of information. You break it down. What is the hacks? Is immediate intervention, okay? Then you ask yourself, what is the case? Patient with depression um, prescribed SSR. That's all. I'll make it easy. And he came in. Um, then what is your buzzwords? Well, I have SSR. I, okay, two weeks later. And somebody with depression. I have summarized the whole question. Is on SSR two weeks later for depression. The name of this medication, I don't care. You just have to recognize it. Now, critically thinking, you can ask yourself, what is the key? This is why I like pathophysiology of the problem. Your exams is all pathophysiology and con pathophysiology give you a content. The idea of antidepressant, whenever you see antidepressant, if I, you are prescribe it to a patient, two weeks is your great, the most important zone. Two weeks, you've got to watch the patient like a hawk because they start getting better. And when they get better, they commit suicide. So that is the early side that you have to start watching patients for suicide. So that's what we're going to use to answer the question. Without even looking at the answer, I've come up with some plan. So you take it with you and you move on. I don't have any appetite anymore. Yes, the patient is depressed because... If you write the symptoms of depression, sicky cap, that sleep, interest, guilt, energy, concentration, appetite, and psychomotor retardation, and as it's suicide, that is expected. So you have to be sharp, not expected. I have gained two pounds. Yeah, they gain weight, fine. I have not had sex for the past two weeks, yes. The assess drive goes down from what? That. The SSRI, the side effect of SSRI is what? Decrease libido and weight gain. So that's where that is coming from. This is expected. If you occur over 30 days, yeah, then you can change the medication, but two weeks is fine. The two weeks mark is always suicide. So I'm looking for a suicide answer. I give out my car to my best friend. You ask yourself, how does this be uh, related to suicide? When your patients start giving out their stuff, making arrangement, making a long-term plan arrangement, they want to finish it right away, it's the sign of committing suicide. They're giving up. They want to clean the house and get ready to leave. So giving out this car is a form of giving out their life, and they, you have to watch them. This is a suicide, you need to intervene. The client was admitted with, so the same thing, we have a, what, SATA question here. So we go through the same breakdown. So SATA question, we read the last portion, a laboratory work show a platelet of four. So I have a platelet of 100,000, which, which of the following is a priority? So my priority question is what is being asked for me? 
it's a priority to so priority patient. What is the case? Patient is being admitted for DVT, is on heparin drip, and the laboratory work shows that. So patient in the hospital on heparin has a platelet level, which action should I take? What's, what are your bars with? Then you underline DVT on heparin drip and the platelet of that, three words, that's all. That means the patient who is getting heparin for DVT, now his platelet is 100,000. So what is your rewrite? Same thing, heparin on heparin and now platelet is 100,000. What should I do? You then you, 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 you have to make your choice. Make your choice by knowing what you know. When somebody is on heparin, the number one thing you look for is platelet level. If platelet level go down more than 50%, we have something we call heparin induced thrombocytopenia. And you have to do something about this because what is will happen, their platelet drop by 50% and there are risks of thrombosis. Thrombosis. Thrombosis means they can form clot and they have stroke. So you have to worry about this patient. Therefore, what do you do? You stop all heparin. So decrease the heparin rate, no. You stop every heparin. Check PTT, too late. Patient platelet is already high and low. It's not going to change anything. When you check PPT, it's not going to change anything. You just have to answer the question. They bring in answers that doesn't make sense, but it's related to the problem. My platelet is low. I need to stop thrombosis. Checking PTT will not stop me the thrombosis. Start endosuperin. Endosuperin is negative because it's what? It's still an heparin. For heparin induced thrombocytopenia, hit no more heparin. Any heparin stuff, you need to stop it. Therefore, starting endosuprine, which is a lower monocular heparin, is negative. Neurovascular exams, yes, they're going to get strokes. So you got to make sure you get a baseline neurovascular exams. Replace all IV tubing. This is true. Most IV tubing have what we call um, heparin impregnated. So impregnated with heparin. So you have to stop most of them, all of them, and change it to non-heparin impregnated heparin. And so this is answer choice. It's right. So I'm going to pick that one. And that's how you can eliminate it. So management for HIT is to stop heparin, no more heparin, stop all heparin IV lines, give them something that doesn't have a heparin in it. So this patient will get the Zabans, those ones that has the last name as Zabans, like Agatoban, okay? They are the factor 10 inhibitors, or you can give them Coumadin, but they cannot get this. Most of the time we give them the Zabans uh, for their management. Same thing. Second question with the last one. Which of the following require immediate intervention? So my ask is I need intervention, okay? Then you ask yourself, what is the case? A client with a known ulcerative colitis was prescribed inflacimab. Which of the following require intervention? So patient is on inflacimab for his UC. I need intervention. Braswell's inflacimab, UC, immediate intervention. Rewrite. Inflacimab, buzzwords, immediate intervention. You know what, if you see what I'm doing? Repetition, your brain telling you, this is what you need to focus on. Then choice, my choice, I have to decide what I want to do. What is inflacimab? Then I look at it, I don't know what it is, but I see MAB. I told you guys, if you look my, listen to the pharmacology series six, day six lecture, anything that has MAB at the end, is immunomodulator. It, it's a, it, de, it, de, it depresses your immune system. Inflacimab, they all have this last name at the end, Inflacimab. So somebody is on immunomodulator, 
um, what do I do? It's something that will decrease the immune system. Well, the immunocompromise. Number one is what? Infection, infection, infection. So all the answers has to match this infection. Don't bring any other thing. You analyze the question. You come up with the plan. This is how you answer question. You come up with what you're looking for. Take it with you wherever you go and analyze it with each answer. Don't compare any answers. You pick an answer and you move on. You make a choice and you move on. So one, I'm just looking at number one. I don't even care that it's two, three, four, five. No, negative. I will not be guarding, guarding this summer. Yeah. If you, we don't want you to get infection. Gardening is one of the, they get like tosoplasmosis from gardening. So you want to avoid that as much as possible. So this doesn't need immediate intervention. I will not be eating any fresh vegetables. Yes, I don't want you to get infection. Watch your vegetables while you cook it. Therefore, this is a good idea. I will have a bottle of water when I go out in the park. Yeah. We don't want you to drink from a water fountain, otherwise you get infection. I can't wait for a trip to Disney World uh, with my family, negative. I need to intervene. You can't go in the crowd, okay? You get infection. So this is, I need to intervene. I'm getting my nasal influenza vaccine tomorrow, negative. I got to intervene. Vaccine, they cannot have live vaccines no live vaccines and live vaccines are these ones if you don't know is they are the mmr you have the varicella you have the um, small pores and then the oral the nasal 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 um influenza or flu vaccine okay or the 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 um the polio okay polio polio vaccine the oral form oral form is all live vaccine these are your live vaccines very live ones they cannot be given to somebody who is immunocompromised they can change this inflammation they can add any methotrexate all the questions, anything that is immunocompromised, they can put it there and it can cause the same problem. So watch it out. Same question. The next should monitor which of the following, okay? A client with a cephalopathy was prescribed lactulose. So this is a straightforward question. If you know it, you pick it as. If you don't know it, then you got to struggle. But it's a straightforward, a pharmacology straightforward question. You're taking lactulose. What should I monitor? Well, lactulose is a laxative. A laxative usually they will lead to diarrhea and then it will lead to hypokalemia. Potassium go down, sodium go up, they get de dehydrated because of the exchange of potassium. Okay. When then when you're taking when you're taking lactulose, we want you to have two to three bar movement. Anything after that, no. And lactulose is used for encephalopathy. And why? We want to decrease your ammonia. You see, I've answered all the questions. So four bar movement a day negative okay i shouldn't monitor for four bar movement i want to get it to like two to three fluid overloaded this what is going to do the fluid is going to go down so they are fluid down not overloaded so their fluid is down so i you should be looking for fluid um, deficit Potassium level, yes, based on this. Calcium, negative. So straightforward pathology, a pharmacology question, um, just to get you going. But this is a subtle one, the harder one. So you go through your process. 
which of the following uh, the next shoe questioned i'm questioning something drawing medication reconciliation okay that's my ask i have to question something a client with asthma present to the clinic for evaluation so my ask i have to question something okay in the case the patient came into clinic and then the buzzwords asthma question medication reconciliation rewrite asthma question medication reconciliation therefore i'm looking at the medication that is not supposed to be there I know that asthma patients should not have Motrin. Yes, so I should question this. Um, if they have Motrin, they get nasal polyps and that causes exacerbation, so no Motrin. So I should question this. Mucumist, mucumist is used to break down mucus. Asthma people don't make mucus. Therefore, you should avoid this in them. Okay, so I should question this. Propanol, okay. Propanol is a blocker. It's a beta blocker, but it's a non-selective beta blocker. Non-selective beta blocker bind to B1 receptor and B2 receptor. B2 receptor is in your lungs. So if propanol bind to this, it lead to bronchoconstriction. I don't want that. So I got to question this. Not a law. Same story. It's a non-selective, non-selective beta blocker. I got a question here. Atanolol is a selective beta blocker, so this is safe in asthma patient. So I don't need to question. So this, 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 and this. One, two, three, four. You need to question five. You good. Same question. Which of the following require a priority action? That means you got to do something. So priority, right? So B sharp. B sharp. You the next B sharp. Which a client was prescribed phenytoin, and therefore um, there, there's something that you need to question. Okay? You need to um, follow up with and be a priority. Okay, so what should be a priority action you for the next? You have to be sharp. And you know this medication, phenytoin, um, is a seizure medication. Common side effect, it causes hypotension. Okay. It causes hypotension. It causes ataxia. Nostagmus, okay. It causes gingiva. It causes gingiva hyperplasia. Okay. Hyperplasia. But the most serious side effect is Steven Johnson syndrome. You see, so sometimes they will give you all the signs and symptoms of the medication, but you should look for the one that will kill the patient. So for this particular question, that's what they're asking you. A sunburn after outdoor sports event. Yeah, this is photosensitivity. It's not hyper, photosensitivity. Therefore, this is a photosensitivity. It's not bad. It's not going to kill them. Easy gum bleeding. This is gingival hyperplasia. Not going to kill them. It's usually happening if they give you taking more than 500 a day and usually fine in kids, uh, like a younger patient. It's not going to kill them. Small popular rash on the chest. Yes, this is Stephen John syndrome. If you don't do anything about it, the rash goes all the way to their body and they go into a B-sharp moment, which is sepsis. You see how B-sharp can be utilized there. They don't tell you, but I know this is infection it can on the body it can be sepsis and a v sharp moment i'm choosing you gate unsteadiness there's nothing here that is in the b sharp so i let b sharp speak for itself therefore this is expected that's the atasia but it's not the b sharp moment so the answer is number three
same story. We do the following is a priority action. Same, B sharp, okay? A client admitted for lumbar puncture found to be in atrial fibrillation. So the case problem is somebody is having lumbar puncture now is in what? AFib, therefore it lumbar puncture is irrelevant. It's not my, my bad ways. If I'm rewriting, I'm not putting lumbar puncture in. It's, the case is now and the um the 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 case and the buzzword is um atrial fibrillation priority action. That's all. Somebody is in AFib priority action. I'm not picking any more words. What is my choice? I know AFib, the normal one. Okay, normal one treatment. Don't be tricked by this in your exams. It's rate control before anticoagulation. Rate control the patient. You can rate control the patient and they still be in AFib, but that's not important. The, 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 so far as the patient is rate control, you're good. You don't need the anticoagulation right away. So use that information, answer the question. Coumadin, negative. You're not getting coumadin. Lay down. Echocardiogram is related to the coumadin, negative. Amiodaron, yes, rate control. I'm controlling your rate. Check thyroid function test. Well, if your thyroid hormones are high, T4 and T3, they will make you tachycardia and you go into AFib. It is not another cause of AFib. But is that relevant? Patient is already in AFib. This is how they trick you in your exams. Checking lab work that will, will not add anything to the information. I already make a diagnosis. I know what the patient have. They've even told me the patient is in AFib. If I check, check a TSA, would it help me anything? It just tell me patient is in AFib. But my priority action, I'm doing something. I'm not checking things. I need to put a patient on a meal drawn. So this is irrelevant. Abudro, this is a beta agonist. Agonist will speed things up. Okay? So beta agonist. If you give them abudro, side effect of abudro is tachycardia. Okay? Heart rate goes up. Why? Because it's a beta agonist. It binds to beta receptors and it you speed down, you speed up your heart. You have tremor, you have palpitation. Guess what? Your patient is already in AFib. You can't do that. Negative. It will cause a problem. So number one, the answer is amiodarone, number three. A client with lymphoma was found. So um, what is that, the situation we have? Um, which of the following? The next you anticipate. So I'm looking for an anticipated finding. Patient, a client with lymphoma was was found to have what fifty thousand platelet after chemotherapy. So which one the next you respect? This is a one of the question again. I put these things in to tell you, show you what kind of questions you can get in pharmacology. This is straightforward pharmacology. Is it that you know it or not? I give you chemotherapy. And your platelet is now 50,000. You're going to bleed and you have petechia. How can I increase your platelets? There's only three medications you need to know for chemotherapy. The fibrastim, this will increase your white count. WBC, erythroprotein, this will increase your RBC. And Oprah Vican, I've always called them Oprah, this will increase your platelet. So for this, the way to remember them is four, okay? F-E-O, four, for patient on and on chemotherapy, with four being figrastin, E, erythroprotein, and Oprah, Oprivikin. So this will increase your platelet. So this is your right answer. Why heparin is wrong? Heparin, Side effect is decreased platelet. So that one is negative. These are the three medications. So four with chemotherapy. Another question. Which of the following the next you expect? A separate question. You know what to do. Ask case, go for it. A client was prescribed with methoclopramide. 
for retractable nausea and develop extra pyramidal side effect. We do the following the next you expect. So what is being asked, expected. What is my case? Patient prescribed methoclopamide. You know it's anti-emetic, okay? And he has developed extra pyramidal side effect. Which one you should respect? What is the buzzword? Which one will you include in the buzzword? There's so many words. You say somebody, I don't even have to include methoclopamide. I don't care about it anymore. But I will I will do that because of one thing. I'll put it there. So reglin, which is methoclopamide. Now I have extra pyramidal side effect. What should the nurse expect? Three words. On your own reglin, you develop extra pyramidal side effect. What are the side effects? That's all. The 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 acronym for extra pyramidal side effect is ADAPT. Adapt with A acute dys uh, dystonia, D akita uh, and dyskinesia, D is dyskinesia, A is akitasia, uh, P is uh, pseudo parkinsonism, and T is tardive dyskinesia, okay? So A, acute dystonia, okay? So this is acute dystonia, okay? Acute dystonia, we have akitasia, right there. Parkinsonism, right there. TD, tardive dyskinesia, right there, right? Then they put diarrhea here to confuse you. I intentionally put it there. Why? Because methoclopamide, the side effect is diarrhea, even though it's anti-emetic. But does that answer my buzzwords? No. My rewrite, you see, that's why you take your time, go through the ask case, buzzwords, rewrite, and make a choice, and you move on. I'm not comparing anything. Look at what happened. I don't see anything about the the the, the side effect of and um, regulating except the side effect related to what? Extra pyramidal side effect. So extra pyramidal side effect is what we're looking for. We don't looking for anything about regulating. So this is why this is wrong. Even though it causes diarrhea, the question say develop extra pyramidal side effect. The nurse should expect certain symptoms of extra pyramidal side effect. Diarrhea is not one of them. Another one, which of the following prescription the nurse should expect? So I'm looking for expected finding. A client was prescribed promethazine. So this is anti-medic due to intractable nausea. She was found to have head locked and twisted to one side. Which of the following? Okay, so what do I expect? Somebody on promethazine, that's Fenagen, is anti-medic, now has the head locked and twisted to one side. This is tocolysis. This is example of TD, okay? Tocolysis. So therefore, patient has de developed tardic dyskinesia. How do you treat it? That's what the question is asking you. What is the treatment for tardic dyskinesia? Let me give you a clue. Um, most people, the reason why they develop extra pyramidal side effect, which is more common with Pakistan patients, is because of increased acetylcholine. So this is cholinergic. Whenever you hear extra pyramidal side effect, that means you have too much cholinergic effect. Therefore, to prevent it, treat it, block it. So, flexero, no. Adervan, no. Benstropin, yeah, is anticholinergic, good. Neostigmine, no. Neostigmine increases your acetylcholine level. Therefore, it will make it worse. Therefore, my answer is three. Same story, as usual, start a question. Which of the following the nurse should expect? A client was placed on oral steroids for six months due to recurrent asthma exacerbation. It's a subtle question. What is being asked? 
expected finding. What is the case? Patient is on steroid for asthma. What is my buzzwords? Steroid, six months, asthma. Okay, then your choice. You make a choice, you go down, each answer is independent from the other. You just stay there, you don't compare, and you move on. So, one, that means my rewrite is what? Rewrite is what? Somebody on steroid for asthma. Six months, what should I expect? Well, what he's telling you is they're asking you a question on cushion. If you're on steroid for six months, you turn into a cushion. So I'm looking for signs of cushion. Moon phase, yes. Abdominal trail, yes. Hypokalemia, guess what? Yes, right? Because after a, a increase your sodium, which causes hypertension and it decreases your potassium. Hyperpigmentation, negative. What causes hyperpigmentation is Addison disease. Expect them to confuse you with that. And then weight gain, yeah, steroid. So this, 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 and this. Okay, so this is wrong. So I like to do a lot of questions so that you guys can get used to it. Um, Yeah, I'm 15. Same thing. We do the following the next you expect. So straightforward pharmacology. A client with diabetes insipidus was prescribed demo, desmopressin. So we do the following you should expect. So we have expected finding. Okay. This is a priority uh, regular question. Expected finding. What is the situation? Somebody with a um, which is the case, somebody with diabetes insipidus is prescribed desmopressin, straightforward pharmacology. Then you ask yourself, what is the DI? DI patient peeing a lot. They don't have ADH, so no ADH, right? They don't have, um, so no, no ADH. If they don't, they don't have the ADH, urine output is high. Okay, if the urine output is high, they're going to be a urine specific gravity. So urine specific gravity is low. Okay, the urine sodium is also going to be low. When you go to the blood, serum specific gravity is high. Serum, sodium, is high because they're losing just water. If you give them, if you give them a um, desmopressin, all this thing will be corrected. They are not going to, they will try to be normal. They normalize as much as possible. They're going to get towards the normal range. They don't overshoot. So normal urine output, yes. Right? I expect the urine output to now to become normal. It's not going to be high anymore. Low urine specific gravity, the urine specific gravity um, is already low. That means it's not working. High serum specific gravity, yeah, it's not working. That's not what I expect. I expect this to correct. Serum sodium of 149 is too high. So it's still disease. So just remember, when you see this question, go back to the basics, the pathophysiology. They're trying to ask you, what is the therapeutic effect? The therapeutic effect is things start to be normal. So all these things will be normal. If you see what is expected here, you are not being sharp. So that's the answer there. A client with, so same thing is Analyze it. which of the following the next respect anticipate. So anticipated finding. A client with urinary retention due to neurogenic bladder. So the same thing. This is straightforward pharmacology. I have a neurogenic bladder. Okay. That means I don't contract. Okay. So I get a urinary retention. I need to contract so that I can empty my urine. 
there's there's a way to remember this. What causes bladder contraction? Oh, okay, bladder contraction is acetylcholine, so cholinergic. So you need cholinergic. So anything that is acetylcholine is good. Anticholinergic who causes retention. Okay, retention. Cholinergic will let you pee, right? So, but in the bladder, bladder medication, there's only, there are a couple of them, few of them that you can remember. The cholinergic has these names at the end. That is the easy way I can teach you to remember. When you see C-O-L, when you see C-O-L, that is cholinergic. So this is cholinergic. Any of this, these are the common bladder med medication. These are detro, oxybuctin is not uh, cholinergic. Trop, trospion, trospion is not solifinicin, uh, solifinicin is not. These are all the causes the bladder, okay, not to contract, they stop contraction. And so when you give this to the patient, it's going to worsen it. I want the bladder to contract. So I'm looking forward, call. Anything that has call at the end is my guy and I'm picking him. It's a cholinergic, the rest are not. So that's the right answer there. So the right answer is this. So, another one. Which of the following priority action, which of the following is a priority action and should be included in the plan of care? So I have a priority question. So I have to be what? Be sharp, okay? The client with schizophrenia was prescribed Zepraxidone. That's your guy, Zepraxidone. Which one should be, be a priority action and I should worry about it? Guess what? What is, you have to know what this is. This is antipsychotic. And so it's uh, atypical antipsychotic. Antipsychotic has a bunch of side effects. They have cholinergic effect, so anticholinergic effect, which is they call dry mouth, the, uh, constipation, urinary retention, the, the, your drowsiness, okay? but then they cause extra pyramidal side effects. But the number one side effect of Zapracidone is QT prolongation. And what does that do? It leads to Tosad de Pontes. Therefore, if it leads to Tosad de Pontes, this patient need to be on a monitor. Treatment for Tosad is magnesium. Therefore, sugar-free candies, yeah, it's side effect of an anticholinergic. I'll give it's fine, but I'm not worried about it. It's not a priority. Remember, you can include this, but it's not a priority. Four rigs, yeah, they get drowsiness, but I'm not worried about them. Cardiac, if this is a SATA, yeah, you choose it. This is not a SATA question. So cardiac monitor, yeah, this is number one. Dystonia, yeah, they develop EPS, extra pyramidal side effect, but for a priority action, I'm worried about your cardiac monitoring. So that's more important than that. Okay. So this is the end of it. I hope you see how pharmacology can be asked in different kind of ways. And I hope I've shown you the secrets for these questions. They are straightforward. They look intimidating. Just take your time, analyze it, use the method of uh, B sharp or the SATA method, which is asked, okay, in the case, the buzzwords. After the buzzwords, then you rewrite them. And then when you rewrite the answer, you make a choice and you move on. You can use it to answer even prioritize your question that technique. But you have to be sharp at every point on the way. Thank you for your time. Take care of yourself. Keep charging. 
and do subscribe to the channel so that you can get more content. Take care of yourself once again. Bye-bye.